How do you kill a giant bison from 100 feet away? 27,000 years ago, our ancestors invented a device that turned a simple spear into a lethal projectile, revolutionizing hunting and securing our place at the top of the food chain. To understand the world before this invention, we must travel back to the Gravettian period of Ice Age Europe. It was a world of breathtaking scale, a cold, semi-arid landscape teeming with colossal herds of bison, wild horses, and reindeer. For the Homo sapiens who lived there, these animals were the key to survival, a walking larder of meat, fat, hide, and bone. But accessing this resource was a deadly proposition. Their primary weapon was the hand-thrown spear. It was a simple and effective tool, but it had a critical flaw. Its effective range was dangerously short. To make a kill, a hunter had to get terrifyingly close to their prey, well within the kill zone of trampling hooves, goring horns, or defensive kicks. Every hunt was a life or death gamble. A moment's hesitation, a slight miscalculation, and a successful hunter could become a mangled corpse. The stakes were etched into the very bones of the people from this era. Skeletal remains of our ancestors often show evidence of traumatic injuries consistent with close quarters hunting. The problem was one of simple physics. The power and range of a thrown spear are limited by the length of the human arm and the strength of the shoulder. There is a hard ceiling on the velocity a person can generate. For generations, this ceiling defined the precarious balance between our ancestors and the giant beasts they hunted. They were successful enough to survive, but their existence was one of constant risk. A better, safer way to hunt was not a luxury. It was an evolutionary imperative. The solution, when it arrived, was not a product of stronger muscles, but of a bigger brain. It was a masterpiece of intuitive physics, an invention so elegant in its simplicity that it would dominate the hunting grounds for the next 20,000 years. It was the atlatl, the spear thrower. The air on the day of its first successful use must have felt charged with possibility. Imagine a hunter standing at a distance from a target, a familiar spear in hand. But this time, they hold something else, a carved piece of wood, perhaps a foot and a half long, with a small hook or spur at one end. This is the atlatl. They rest the butt of the spear against this hook, gripping both the spear and the thrower in one hand. The feeling of the cold, smooth wood would be familiar, but the technique is new. Instead of just throwing the spear, they swing their entire arm forward in a long, fluid arc. And at the last moment, they flick their wrist, launching the spear from the atlatl's hook. The result is astonishing. The spear doesn't just fly, it leaps forward with a speed and power they have never seen before. There would be a sharp, satisfying zip as the spear tears through the air, covering a distance twice or even three times what they could achieve before and striking the target with enough force to penetrate the thickest hide. In that moment, the world changed. The atlatl is a simple lever. By artificially extending the length of the thrower's arm, it dramatically increases the amount of time over which force is applied to the spear or dart, as the projectiles are more accurately called. This translates into a massive increase in velocity and kinetic energy. A dart launched from an atlatl can reach speeds of over 90 miles per hour, striking with a force comparable to a modern compound bow. It turned a simple spear into a lethal projectile. The hunters were no longer tethered to their prey. They could now hunt from a position of relative safety, 
striking from a distance with deadly accuracy. This was a paradigm shift in the predator-prey relationship. The balance of power had swung decisively in our favor. This new technology spread rapidly across the globe. Archaeological evidence for the atlatl is found in the form of the darts themselves, which are often fletched like arrows for stability and in the beautifully carved atlatl weights that some cultures attach to the thrower, perhaps for balance or as a kind of silent pendulum to aid in a smooth throw. These artifacts tell a story of a technology that was refined, decorated, and became a central part of their cultural identity. The impact on their society was profound. With a safer and more effective hunting method, they could bring down larger game more consistently. This led to a more reliable food supply and a nutritional surplus. For the first time, our ancestors had a degree of food security. This security was the catalyst for a cultural explosion. The Gravettian period, the era of the Atlatl's dominance, is the same period that gives us some of the most breathtaking art of the Stone Age. It is the time of the famous Venus figurines, small, stylized statues of female figures that have been found from France to Siberia. It is a time of incredible innovation in bone and ivory carving. This artistic flourishing was not a coincidence. And it then, was a direct the result of set, the free time and energy that a food home. surplus provides. Indeed. When you are not constantly on the brink of starvation, you have the luxury to think about things other than your next meal. You have time to create, to perform rituals, to develop a complex, symbolic world. The atlatl didn't just fill their stomachs, it fed their minds. The climax of the atlatl story can be imagined in a great bison hunt. A hunting party stands on a ridge, overlooking a vast, snow-dusted plain where a herd of several hundred bison grazes. The wind is a low moan, carrying the scent of the animals and the cold promise of more snow. Before the atlatl, this scene would have been one of careful, dangerous stalking. Now, the hunters are calm, confident. They are armed with their new superweapon. They coordinate their attack, launching a volley of darts from a safe distance into the herd. The darts fly true, striking several of the massive beasts. The herd panics and thunders away, leaving behind the wounded animals for the hunters to dispatch. They have achieved in minutes what would have previously taken hours of dangerous, close quarters work. They are no longer just hunters, they are masters of ballistics, the first projectile engineers. The spear thrower was so successful that it remained the primary hunting weapon in many parts of the world until the invention of the bow and arrow and even continued to be used alongside it. It was the weapon that allowed the first Americans to hunt the megafauna of the New World, and it was still being used by the Aztecs when the Spanish arrived. This simple piece of wood and bone is one of the most important and long-lasting technologies in human history. It represents a new stage in our cognitive evolution, a mastery of physics that allowed us to overcome our physical limitations, become the most formidable predators the planet had ever seen. It was a declaration that our survival would no longer be determined by the strength of our muscles, but by the power of our minds.